So I'm just going to try and run it in a winner. So 2015 multiple choice. I'm just going to try and run it in a winner. So um, there may be some hesitations and other bits where I've had to cut things out. But let's hope I can get through the whole thing. OK, question one. In the diagrams below, the circles represent molecules on either side of a cell membrane. In which of these diagrams would the molecules move into a cell by diffusion? OK, so if I want diffusion, I really have to go from high to low. That's all we know about diffusion. You also know there's no energy involved. Um, that's it. OK, so it's a passive form of transport. Right, I need to move into a cell. So I need the inside of the cell to be low. And I need the outside to be high. And then I just go looking. So in A, they're both the same, so nothing's going to move anyway. In B, the high is on the inside, so it's going to move out. Nope. In C, the outside is low and the inside is way higher, so nope. And in D, outside is high, inside is low, so that one's correct. Question two. Which of the following does not involve mitosis? So mitosis is the production of new cells. Uh, you need that for growth and repair, which pretty much tells you, OK, so that's mitosis and that's mitosis. Uh, maintenance of the diploid chromosome complement is almost the definition of what's going on during mitosis as well. However, synthesis of proteins, um, that you would do just generally um, in cells. It would be involved in mitosis, but in everything else as well. So it's not specifically that one. Question three. So this is a double axis graph. You just got to be careful where you read things too. The graph below showed changes in the enzyme and substrate concentrations in a seed over a period of time. So you've got your enzyme concentration here. It is the solid line. And then we've got a substrate concentration. It's the dotted line. And we're reading substrate to this side and enzyme to the other side. How many days does it take for the substrate concentration to decrease by 50%? So I'm actually just going to totally ignore everything to do with the enzyme concentration. I'm just going to look at substrate. So at the start, at day zero, the enzyme, sorry, substrate concentration, not enzyme, um, dotted line reading this way was six. OK, I need it to decrease by 50%. So I need it to go down by a half, which means I need it to go down to three. I'm going to read across, find my three on the dotted line, not the solid, go down. It took four days. It's not actually a difficult read. It's the fact that they've thrown in that extra information and that makes it tricky. Question four. Some stages of genetic engineering are shown below. Um, so you remove the gene. Um, the plasmid is cut open, gene inserted into the bacterial plasmid, and then the gene sealed into the bacterial plasmid. And then we've got synthesis of required product by bacteria. Which letter indicates the stage where the plasmid is inserted into a bacterial cell? So this is once you've engineered the plasmid. So it's not getting the genes. It's not cutting it open. It's not inserting it. It's after you sealed it. OK, and so it's D. Question five. I think this one's not too bad. It's just a problem solving one, though. OK, it looks maybe a little bit tricky. The effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis was measured in two species of plants, L and M. Results are shown. OK, uh, the rate of photosynthesis of species M is. So species M, very clear, is this line here. OK, species L, which is our comparison, is this line here. OK. The rate of photosynthesis of species M is, is it slower than L in low light intensities? Well, no, because L is not doing anything in low light intensities. M is at least doing something, so it's faster. Slower than L in high light intensities? Yes, because L is higher and M is lower. Uh, just to check, is M faster than L in medium light intensities? That's sneaky, because you're like, well, no, it's, it's either the same or, or slower. So nope. Uh, faster than L in high light intensities, well, that's the opposite of B, which we've already said is correct, so definitely not. Right, six is no longer in the course content. Um, a meristem, just to be, just for interest sake. Okay, a meristem is the plant equivalent of a stem cell. Okay, so um, if it says what was produced by a meristem, you're like looking for a plant cell involved, so it's A, but you don't need to worry about that at all. Okay, question seven. The diploid number of chromosomes in a cell from a kangaroo is 12. Which line in the table below identifies the number of chromosomes for the cell type shown? So we've got sperm, skin, nerve and zygote. OK, so what we're seeing is diploid. So that's its normal cell complement 
is 12. So every normal cell will be 12. The weird cells that you have are gametes, which have only got half of it. So they would have six and that's it really. They've, the other one you could have is a red blood cell, which has basically got nothing. Okay. Um, so we're looking at sperm cell, 12. No, because that should only be six. Skin, six. No, because that should be 12. Nerve, six. No, because that should be 12. And the zygote, yes, because the zygote is the fusion of two gametes. Okay. And we've just said that your gamete is six and six. So put that together gives you 12. Okay. Question eight. Diagram below shows the same sections of matching chromosomes in four flies, A, B, C, and D. The allele shown can be identified using a key. So we've got an allele for striped body and for unstriped. So this is at the first position here. Okay. And then we've got the allele for normal antennae, and that is at the second position. So this is over here. Which fly is homozygous for body pattern, heterozygous for antenna type? So homozygous, that means same, okay? I'm looking for the same alleles. And heterozygous, that means I'm looking for different alleles. So you just gotta run it through. Okay, so on the body ones, I need something which has got the same. So A's in with a shout, that's good. Uh, B's not, C's not, and D is. They are two different alleles in A and D, but in A they're both the same and in D they're both the same, so they're homozygous. I then need heterozygous. A's out. This is B's right, C's wrong, and... oh no, sorry, B's wrong, C's right, and D is right. Okay, which is why D is the correct answer for that one. I'm not going to go and redo. Followed that. Okay, question nine. We've got an alveolus and an associated blood capillary. Okay, so you've got, this is your blood, direction of blood flow is given as the arrow. So this is, this is you coming in from the heart with your deoxygenated blood. Okay, where we are going to pick up oxygen and leave as oxygenated blood. And we're also gonna get rid of our carbon dioxide. So at this point, I expect that I've got no oxygen left and I'm expecting high CO2. But by the time I've got round to the other side, I've got high O2 and I've got low CO2. And that's really what we're looking at. And then you just have to be careful because this is the concentration at X and then at Y. Okay, not X and X, which they've got here. Okay, so at X, oxygen should be low. At Y, we're saying carbon dioxide should now be low. So the answer is C. Okay, then you've got a heart one. Okay, following sequence shows part of the blood flow through the body. Which line in the table identifies X, Y, and Z? So you've got to know all your stuff. So if we go with our normal kind of heart structure, okay, our atrium's at the top, ventricles down the bottom to give us our little hearty shape. Okay, so this is our right atrium, right ventricle, and then we go out, and then we come back in, left atrium, and left ventricle. Okay, so our right atrium, right ventricle, when we go out, we are going to the lungs. So that's going to be the pulmonary artery. And then when we come back, we're going to come back from the lungs. That's going to be the pulmonary vein. Okay, this is everything that we need to have for this one. Which line identifies X, Y, and Z? Right atrium, down to right ventricle. So X is right ventricle. Goes out the pulmonary artery. And we're good, actually, at this point. Comes back in pulmonary vein. And... Yeah, that's it, B. Okay, question 11. This is just a reading carefully graph. Graph below shows the relationship between the concentration of carbon dioxide and oxyhemoglobin in the blood. Okay, so our concentration of carbon dioxide is increasing this way and our concentration of oxyhemoglobin is increasing going up. Okay, and then you just work them through. As the carbon dioxide concentration increases, the concentration of oxyhemoglobin decreases. Yes, because I've got an increasing going along here and we can see that this is just falling down the way so A is correct let's just run this as the carbon dioxide constant decreases the concentration of oxyhemoglobin decreases well that's wrong because carbon dioxide concentration decreasing is going that way and if the oxyhemoglobin was going to decrease we would have a line that goes like that 
As the carbon dioxide concentration increases, the concentration of oxyhemoglobin increases. So that would, again, have a line like this. Okay. Um, increasing carbon dioxide concentration has no effect upon the concentration of hemoglobin, in which case we would have a straight line. So the only one that makes sense is A. Question 12. Chart below shows the percentage of men and women with obesity at different ages in a population. F which of the following statements is true? It's another one just going to run it through. Okay. For each age group, there is a higher percentage of obese men than obese women. So the men is in the pale grey and the women is in the dark. And it says higher percentage of obese men than women. So this one tells a lie straight to that. So this is not true because here we've got more women. They are higher on this one. They're higher on this one. They're higher in the next, they're lower again, and they're lower again. Okay, now what that means is you get rid of A and also B, because there was some that were up and some that were down. So now we're left with C and D. Obesity in men and women increases with age up to 64 years, or does it decrease with age up to 64 years? It is quite clear that we have an increase. Okay, question 13 is no longer part of the course content. The definition of a biome is a particular region that's characteristic um, with particular climate, flora and fauna. So don't worry about 13. OK, question 14. It's a bit of a gift as long as you don't panic. OK, the size of a population of sales can be estimated using the following formula. Population equals the number collected on the first day times the number collected on the second day, all divided by the number of marked individuals found on the second day. A student investigated the population of snails. Okay, so we've, we're looking for the population. He collected 40 snails, so that is day one. Marked their shells and released them. Next day, 35 snails were collected. So I'm going to multiply that by 35, and 14 of these were found to be marked. Just plug it all in. Okay, top line is 1,400 divided by 14 gives you 100. Question 15, which of the following describes inter-specific, inter-specific competitions? That means between different species. So can I get rid of C and D? Okay, individuals of different species requiring different or requiring similar resources. If they didn't need the same thing, then you wouldn't have competition. Right, so, if, so A is not going to cause competition, B is. Okay, question 16, we're looking at a population chart. Okay, we've got four populations of animals, P, Q, R and S, and areas of interbreeding. Interbreeding takes place in the shaded areas. Okay, how many species may evolve over time? So for evolution of a species, the first thing we need to have is isolation. And this bit is definitely isolated, but these guys are not isolated from each other. Although P is not breeding with R, there is breeding between P and Q, and then between Q and R, so there's still genes moving. Okay, there's still alleles that can move between. So without that isolation, it means that we're going to end up potentially just with two different species. Okay, question 17. Antibiotic resistance and bacteria is an example of evolution. Which of the following shows a sequence of events leading to this? Okay, so for you to get any form of evolution, the first thing you need is variation. Okay, you can't get natural selection without variation. So it's not starting with natural selection, it starts with mutation. And then you need to apply the pressure. The pressure is the antibiotics. And at that point, some of them will survive and some of them will not. And the successful will pass on their genes. And that's the natural selection. Okay, so that's why it's C. Question 18. I must admit, I did not like this question when it came up in the exam, because I feel that the right answer is not there, but that's beside the point. Okay. If the population continues to increase at the same rate as between 1975 and 2000, predict the population size in 2025. Okay. So this is a gap between 4000 and 6000. So assuming that there's the same number, then you would say, okay, fine, that's another 2000 on top of the 6000 and you get 8,000, and that is the right answer by the mark scheme. When I first saw this question, what I said was, if you've gone from 4,000 to 6,000, that means that you've increased by 2,000. That's 2,000 from a 4,000 population, means that you've actually increased by 50%. So, and I think that's more of a rate than, because what they're saying, 
if it increased by the same number, I have no problem with the question, but it says rate. And for me, I would be looking then at percentage. So I would have then said, right, okay, 50% of 6,000 is 3,000. So add, sorry, 3,000, add those two on, would give me an answer of 9,000, but that was not there. So when I first read the question, I thought, well, that's what it must be. It's a 50%, it's got to be 9,000. But then you look at the answers and you go, well, that's not giving me that at all. So I had to look again at the graph and say, well, the only thing it could be is if that's gone up by 2,000, they're looking for another 2,000. Okay, um, that's it. Question 19. DDT can be sprayed onto crops to kill insects. It can be washed off the crops by rainwater and flows into rivers where it accumulates in food chains. Typical freshwater food chain and the concentration of DDT in each organism is shown below. So we've got our algae, stickleback, trout and osprey. You start off with a really pitifully small concentration and then it gets higher and higher and very much higher. Okay, The percentage increase in DDT concentration between the trout and the osprey is... Okay, so percentage increase is the same as, even if you're, if you're doing decrease, same deal. What you're looking for here is change. So look for the change, divide it by what your start was and times it by 100. Okay, so in this case, the start was five, the end was 20. So that means that my change is 15, my start was five. So that's three times 100 gives me 300. Okay, last question. Which of the following statements describes the sequence of event when fertilizers leach into a lock? Okay, so you just need to know you need to know the order of this. So it's fertilizer leaching into a lock. So what we need first off is an increase in the plant species. And in this case, we're looking at algal blooms. The algae, short lived, so they then die. Once they die, they are basically now food for bacteria. Bacteria then increase in numbers, use up the oxygen. So this arrow here is kind of missing out some steps of what's going on. Oxygen concentration then falls and that will kill off other things as well. And that's the end of that paper.